Hi, my name is Lacey. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this fun, foggy forest scene. In order to get started, let me show you what I have here. I use a mix of core and shin hand watercolor paints based on what I like. I've got a Payne's Gray, a yellow that's more of a kind of a golden yellow. A deep red that's kind of brownish, bright magenta pink, a deep forest green, and a very bright lime green. I also am using a blue, I believe it's a, a phthalo blue, and I'm trying to get that right now. Other than that, I have all of my brushes that I'm going to be planning to use. I have my paper taped down securely around all edges, and I have my palette that I have filled with water using an eyedropper so that I can mix up several different colors so that I can be painting with them at the same time. We're going to be starting with the background. We're going to be trying to make the essence of fog, so I've got kind of a a very translucent blue-gray color that I'm mixing up. Always make sure to have a test strip like I do down at the bottom so you can make sure the color is right. I also made kind of a golden hue that's very translucent again so that I can add some light to the fog. And finally I'm going to add some kind of a, a purpley pink color so that I can add some depth to the colors. You're going to want to start by wetting your entire piece of paper. We want these colors to move and flow. We're not trying to paint exact clouds or exact fog. We just kind of want to add color where we want it to, and we want it to flow and become part of the page. And that's what we're going to do with this first step, is kind of block out these areas where we want this color to be. I've decided to bring it in from the left, some dark areas in the fog, as well as down from the right-hand corner going into the middle of the page. Then adding in some highlight areas in the areas that I have kept white. As well as we're going to add in a little bit of the pink to give just some interesting colors here. When working with watercolor, you really want to work with layers. That's what's going to give you the depth. I decided that I wanted to kind of use some darker colors and things, so I mixed up the colors a little bit darker, and I also re-wetted my page so that again it would make sure it flow really well. Adding those colors in here now. Remember, nature is very irregular, so do just kind of what you feel here. Where you want areas to be darker, where you want to keep them real diluted and light where you want to add the highlights. If at any point you get too much water build up on the sides, go ahead and with a clean dry brush you can wipe that right up. If you want to preserve some of the white areas, you can go in while it's still wet with a paper towel as I have here and kind of blot it out some of the color. We're working in layers here, so go in and add more darkness to kind of the middle points or certain areas within those dark areas you've blocked out to add more depth, removing any puddling as you go. And continue doing this until you are happy with the depth that you've created. You don't want any certain area to be completely saturated with a color because it is fog and we do want this to be um, kind of ethereal a bit, but what you want to do is make sure there is enough depth and also remember that this is going to dry a bit lighter than what you see here. The other thing that I've neglected to do is I haven't painted all the way to the bottom. 
I do kind of have a harsh line where I've stopped painting and so we want to go ahead and kind of work that in together because anything we paint over it we're going to see that harsh stop so go ahead and do that if you haven't already. At this point you want to let your background dry. If you're impatient like me you can use a hair dryer on a low setting making sure to work all the way around the paper and not just focus on one area or you can let it dry naturally. Make sure you do let it dry enough to where you don't have any pools or you will get harsh lines using the hair dryer to dry it. What we're gonna do now is mix up our colors for our bottom block of kind of the forward foreground mountain. We want a real deep green and we want a very vi bright, vibrant green to add highlights. Start with your lightest color of green that you're going to be using and block in this area. You can make this any shape you want. I've wanted it, I've decided I want it just kind of at the bottom part. And I started with the light green and then I added some of the dark green into the wet so that it kind of just moves around and is very natural looking. Making sure that you don't pool any, any of the liquid on the sides, removing that. And we're gonna work this in a few different layers until we feel that we have the depth of color that we want. I decided I wanted kind of a more neutral green, so I added some of that brown red color into it so that I could bring down some of the vibrancy. After mixing that, I decided I wanted this to be dry before I put another layer on top, so I went ahead and did that. And now I'm going to be focusing on making the dark and light areas of this. Even though we're gonna be painting trees over this, we do wanna make sure that we show some depth of the mountains, areas that are recessed, areas that are um, you know, the, the top parts of ridges, because even though it's going to be mainly covered, it is going to show through and you're going to have added depth. It might even help inform where to place some of your trees. Do this until you're happy. Once I was satisfied with my bottom mountain shape and depth, I'm wiping out my basin for my lime green because I won't be needing that anymore. And I'm gonna be mixing up a very, very light version of a gray green to show kind of the background trees. These are the ones that are just barely poking through the fog. Um, we're gonna do this so that it's just barely visible. We just want these to be in the very, very background. And you make these, these little tree shapes by kind of drawing a line where you want the main part of the tree, a very light line, and then squiggling your brush out in either direction, kind of like the branches. And then I also usually dipped my, my brush in water after I made it, and I kind of diffused it out towards the bottom because when you see trees in fog, they don't just abruptly stop, they kind of transition out. And you just want to look at your painting and decide where you want these trees to be. I've decided this is a tall mountainside, and so my trees go all the way up. And I'm trying to keep that in mind and consider that the trees that are closer to the bottom piece are going to be maybe larger as well as more visible because that's often how fog is. Everything in the background is harder to see. I've slowed this down a little bit so that you can see kind of the motions that I make with my brush. I've drawn a line and then I pat out to either side kind of in a horizontal direction so that we get some irregular shapes that look like boughs on an evergreen tree. 
again, it's nature. It doesn't have to be perfect. And oftentimes, the more irregular it looks, the more it looks like something you'd find in nature. Next, you want to slightly darken that color you use to block in those very faint trees because you're not just going to have one layer. It's not just going to be a faint tree and then a very prominent tree. You want kind of three different layers. So we're going in here and we're blocking those in as well. Filling in gaps, sometimes even kind of putting them over near where there are certain parts of other trees. The more you add, the more it's going to really kind of hint at to this scene and the more realistic it's going to be. There are a lot of trees in a forest. And again, in order to add more depth, we're going to darken this again. As you can see on my test strip, that's how I make sure that it's just slightly darker. Enough to be noticeable, but not so much that it's going to really stand out from the rest of them. And I make those shapes, and then I go back in with the water and I kind of blot out the bottom part to help kind of dissolve it into the background. making sure that they don't all look exactly the same. Some are taller and skinnier, some are shorter and wider. Some are close together and some are far apart. Fog weaves in and out and through trees, so there doesn't have to be a particular rhyme or reason to this, just where you feel that adding them is going to add depth or that where you think it's gonna look good. Continue this until you feel happy with your result. Make sure that as you do get closer to the foreground, you make your trees a little larger and that will help with a little more realism. We're gonna go in with a fourth layer here and I do try to make this last one a little more green. It is darker, but it has a little more green to it so that you can really kind of get the essence um, you know, when you usually see things in fog, they're really grayed out, but the ones that aren't do have some of that, you know, the color that, that you would normally see. And I'm doing this uh, kind of sparingly, and I also on, oftentimes go back in after I've painted the tree, and I add an extra hit of color to the very top of it. That just helps it stand out even more. And then we move on to the foreground, so things that are actually in that front mountain piece that you've painted. You want this to be slightly darker than the last one you did. Block in these different ones, and I usually try to make sure the ones that I block in first don't touch because by the time I'm done kind of painting the different trees that aren't touching, I can go back in in a moment and they will be dry enough so that I can paint a tree right next to it that does touch, but there are still separation and they don't completely bleed together. You want to think about how trees kind of look and they are lighter kind of on the edges than they are in the middle parts, and that's just the way the sun lights things. So I'm starting with a lighter color here. And in a minute, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up a dark color that I'm going to go back in and add to the centers of those trees in order to make them look a little bit more shaded or three-dimensional. And you just wanna fill this in until you think that, you know, you have a nice mountain scene. Again, there are a lot of trees in a forest, so this part takes a little bit of time. You'll also be able to see here as I add these in, do you notice that that bottom piece of land that we blocked in, because we did it in a regular way and we did build up certain shadows and certain light areas, as those peek through, it really does make some of those trees look like they sit up higher than the other ones. You'll see now I'm adding in those darker areas and a few just darker trees too. 
continue doing this until you feel like your work is done. As you can see here, I've decided that I want to um, go ahead and kind of try to blend into the background. I want some of those trees to actually go up and cover the bottoms of those trees that poke through the fog or the mist because I think that's going to make this look a little more seamless. And it's done. Now what we need to do is wait for it to dry. We'll be able to remove the tape and take a look at what we've done. In order to take off this paint or the tape without hurting the paper, uh, if you zap it with a hairdryer on a hot setting, it will release the adhesive and then you have this nice white border without ripping or tearing your your paper. Pull it off, sign it, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.